Institutes. The founder and CEO of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, Muda Yusuf, has expressed, uh, talked about the risks that uh, electioneering in Nigeria poses to the economy. Uh, he's got to summarize here in bullet points, says electioneering poses a risk. He says electioneering distracts from governance and economic management. Heated rhetoric stokes violence, which deters investment. Election spending has inflation implications. Also said, there's also corruption risk, the risk of state resources being used for elections. And then it all presents uncertainty for investors. And it says economic reform initiatives have been stalled. Now, on the flip side, he did say that uh, certain sectors of the economy do benefit uh, from election spending. Uh, he mentioned social media influencers, he mentioned uh, ad advertising agencies, media houses, and with election season in Nigeria having kicked into uh, high gear, we're going to be talking to um, Femi Oderumi, who's a group CEO of CIG, Creative Intelligence Group, uh, about corporate communications in uh, an election year. Femi, good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So. Um, again, going through Muda Yusuf's notes there, where he was talking about the fact that there are certain sectors of the economy that benefit from election spending. Is the corporate communications sector rubbing its hands with glee ahead of the uh, 2023 elections? Okay, well, well <laughs> I wouldn't exactly uh, tell me that as rubbing, <laughs> rubbing with glee, but yes, um, I would agree that um, leaders of um, communications uh, consultancies or agencies are actually la looking to land um, significant um, engagement during this period. Um, I, I think they will be trying to do that cautiously because providing communications within the Nigerian political space can be likened to trying to grab a live catfish sometimes. In fact, trying to grab a live <laughs> electric eel sometimes. I, I like that analogy. Um, okay, so p politicians have been accused of, I guess, driving up the cost of I can pick a sector, real estates in certain parts of Abuja, for mm. instance. If you're a firm mm. trying to get corporate comms services in this election period, are you at risk of facing higher prices due to excess demand from the season, being crowded out, essentially? Um, well, I think generally you're, you're likely within this season to face higher prices with communication services, mainly due to inflation. Um, but what you're more likely to face due to the election season will be uh, scarcity of talent because, you know, scarcity of experience and effective talent might be who might be otherwise engaged. Uh, that would be something that you find. But there's also a growing field of specialized communication services that are targeting the election or political communication space. So um, it's a half and half. All right. Now, uh, just over the weekend, there were a number of artists that held a... Um, voter registration drive files the bad guy, yeah. MI, and so on and so forth at uh, TBS um, here in Lagos, Tafa Balea Square. Um, registered voters yeah. had to show PVCs to gain entry. Is there any way mm -hmm. that brands can key into opportunities like that while, I guess, remaining neutral? Is that, is that possible? Yes, so that would be the main concern. Um, first off, I really love the initiative. I think it's fantastic. Um, it also goes to show how the Nigerian electorate is becoming more, um, how do you say, sophisticated, if you would. Um, but it really is about seeing it as a civic responsibility, encouraging civic responsibility uh, rather than pitching candidates. So for brands, if they take a look at it from, those lens, from that lens, then they can actually partake in it without um, having fear. Now, the thing is, Brands always have a, a better trust bond with their customers, uh, more than the government, sad to say. But with that um, trust bond comes the responsibility of trying to encourage people to do this. So if they, if they actually um, engage in it as a creative responsibility, then yes, they would, they would do so without fear. The onus is on, the, um, on the, the people who are putting such initiatives together, people like Files and you know, other people who might be having such ideas to ensure that they are not associated with a particular candidate or a particular party to enable brands have the confidence to be able to come in, play their um, creative responsibilities, as I mentioned earlier, and then encourage people to come out and you know, utilize their votes. Well, what, what's the trend in terms of uh, politicians utilizing, I guess, local corporate comm services versus seeking foreign services? Is that, is that a thing? As with every professional services sector in Nigeria, it is a thing. You know, if it's foreign, it's generally deemed to be better. However, the, um, the problem 
uh, can be in how the local service firms actually pitch themselves or pitch their ideas, which often are not is not as compelling as their foreign counterparts. Um, you also have the the problem of you know politicians who literally are quite trying to look for value and they simply want to win. So if you have local firms, you know, focusing on the revenues that they start to gain, then the value that they what they could provide to the politicians, then what you have is, you know, the foreign firms coming in and getting all those um, juicy gigs. That said, there's a trend that has been, you know, emerging up since the 2015 elections, where you find that, you know, um, local firms like myself, uh, my company, and others who are quite dedicated to the space have the experience, have developed the frameworks that deliver value within the Nigerian political space are actually starting to give foreign um, counterparts run for their money and then giving local politicians, Nigerian politicians, a reason to go local. Yeah, but then uh, you can help me out here. What would a foreign firm know about the you know, intricacies of politics on the ground, grassroots politics and so on, versus a local firm? That strikes me as odd to even want to even go with a foreign firm. So it's a fantastic question, yeah, and, and that's what we deal with all the time. The thing with... Most of the foreign firms have frameworks that help to deliver, you know, communications in a way that gets out the vote. And they gather that with, uh, they also boost that with experience that they've, uh, they've gathered with other African countries. Um, most times we don't have a structured way towards, you know, uh, approaching communications in Nigeria. It usually sometimes is subjective to how the top management feels, not really relying on things like polling data, analytics, and all the, all the other stuff. So if you then put forward your idea to uh, Nigerian politicians as a local firm and they don't see that compelling reason, then they will go for the foreign one. And that's where companies like myself have made the difference. Um, we are globally competent, and but we're very locally aware. And, and I think, you know, most foreign firms have tried to do that. And if, in fact, if you look in the general communication space, you find that things like production, your big adverts, big uh, live productions are usually produced in South Africa or in Nigeria by uh, South African-led crews. But that is changing, right? Because the local firms are starting to think, oh, hang on, we can do it. And we can actually go learn from the foreign ones and then start to do that knowledge transfer within our space. Great stuff. All right. So what about in-house corporate comms versus outsourcing to private firms like yourself? What's, what, what's the trend uh, there? Well, allow me to say that outsourcing, you know, outsource firms always win. And the reason is that, we, you know, we can deploy fast, that we have uh, considerable resources and experience. Um, and we don't suffer from tunnel vision, which um, in-house teams usually suffer from. So most times it's a partnership and sometimes it really just goes, it goes well for the client to go with an outsource firm because, you know, you have cross um, experience across different clients and sectors and you can definitely deploy a lot more resources faster. Does it matter if a politician is social media savvy? Can they, can they do without external, you know, or outsourcing if they are? Okay, so I guess it would depend on the audience the politician is trying to, um, to convert because really it's all about influencing the audience that matters to you. Um, so if you're talking about a politician on a, a councillor level or local government, probably you can do without social media because the audience is smaller, probably less sophisticated, and they can, they can get done. Now, um, as your audience grows and your, the, the area of coverage grows, you definitely need social media. But then you need to understand it as a medium, uh, just like with every other medium. So uh, what do you want to say? How do you want to say it? Why does it matter? All of these things play, and um, they do need to get savvy. And if they can't do that, they can hire a consultant that will help them. Um, I think you mentioned inflation earlier to, in answer to a, a prior question that I, I threw to you. We've seen prices continue to rise. So does that you know, feed, feed into the, the corporate comms as well? With pricing from 2019 to 20, no, sorry, 2015 to 2019, in fact, you know, 2011, all the way down to this election cycle, um, you know, are you guys jacking up your, your prices? <laughs> Well, Rose, uh, I, I think inflation has affected everything. Now, um, the communications business runs primarily on technology these days. Um, things from your uh, collaboration apps, you know, even down to things like your email and all the other analytics dashboards and whatnot. So inflation affects all of that. Um, I, I think you know, the businesses, our businesses like mine would respond appropriately. Uh, but not necessarily, we're responsible, not necessarily because, you know, it's a politician, political space. You might put a bit of a margin because of the, um, the risk that comes with consulting for politicians, but generally the prices stay the same. Competence is what matters. So, okay, so a social media influencer in 2011 would charge the same in 2019, or would they also jack up their prices as well? 
Well, so a social media influencer will be different from a communications consultant trying to work out strategy for yourself because then that will be based on uh, hours put in or what problem you're trying to solve. Uh, but generally, uh, you find that, that you might in, it depends. In some situations, the prices might be negotiable to be the same thing because the economy is constricted somewhat. Um, you don't have probably as much of a war chest as you did in 2015. Um, so it's arguable. It, it, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. But generally, as, as far as, um, as uh, uh, ballpark figures go, yes, there will be a bit of a margin, but it will not be, uh, it will not be that significant. Um, what kind of ad spend do you anticipate from here on out leading up to the elections? Ad spend with regards to what medium or ad spend in terms of you know, ballpark figures? I guess ballpark, or we can include both, you know, just in general, as far as corporate comms, advertising, you know, media and all, all this, right. all, all the likes. Okay. Well, I, I like to stay away from ballpark figures, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. <laughs> but um, in, in terms of medium, uh, uh, TV, um, outdoor radio still, is still king. Um, there's been a very interesting, you know, trend, which um, digital and mobile spending has been increasing year on year. Um, there might be a bit of a hit with digital, especially social channels this year, because there's a lot more regulation rolled out by uh, uh, companies like Meta, Twitter and whatnot, which um, aims to regulate the political advertising space. So we might not be seeing that much of an increase in ad spends in those in those regions. But Nigerian politicians like to see themselves. They like to be aware that everybody can see what they're saying. So TV, outdoor, radio, still king. Uh, mobile, uh, digital, we're still you know, experience a year on year, probably about, say, 10 to 15 percent more than the last time more than the last cycle. All right. And outside elections, is there, um, I guess, enough demand to keep ad agencies and corporate comm services going uh, in, in Nigeria? Oh, most definitely, Rotus. Um, again, like I mentioned, you know, uh, the, the, the um, demand for organizations and brands and even for politicians or government agencies will be, always be to influence the audience that matters to them. As long as that need is there, there will always be demand for effective consultancies and agencies. Um, the good thing, though, is that COVID has taught a lot of uh, these people to, uh, a lot of these clients, organizations or whatnot, to um, expect results by judging output rather than input. So gone are the days when it mattered whether you put a 50-man team on a particular account. Everybody wants to see what can you solve, what can you um, bring to the table as results. So yes, there would be, uh, there will be a lot of demand to keep uh, businesses like ours in, <laughs> in business. Great stuff. Uh, Femi, you're dealing with me. Uh, group CEO, Creative Intelligence Group. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your insights.